So I've been wanting to record this for quite a while. Um, finally today I just decided it was time. I've had a lot of moms ask me about this and I just feel like my story needs to be shared. So on April 1st, 2015, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy after um, three C-sections. I had an all natural delivery, no complications and no medicine. So I just, I want to share my story. So my first baby was nine pounds, nine ounces, um, born via C-section. After 19 hours of labor, I had an uncomplicated pregnancy, no reason to think I would have a C-section. Um, we knew the baby was going to be big, but nobody seemed worried. Um, everybody in my family had normal pregnancies and deliveries, like no issues. So having a C-section with my first baby was really a downer and um, really a disappointment and it took me a really long time to recover um, physically, emotionally. I really felt like I um, was just kind of robbed like from that first pregnancy experience, first um, baby experience. Um, just a really rough couple months um, recovering and taking care of him and myself and it just wasn't something I wanted to go through again and um, I remember going to my postpartum checkup and the doctor telling me well this baby was 99 all your babies are just gonna keep getting bigger so you're just gonna have c-sections from here on out and it just hit me like this isn't no like this isn't right like I just I just it didn't feel right when she said that and I started looking into other options. I didn't know what VBACs were at that point. I just, I remember Googling vaginal delivery after C-section. Like, I wasn't even sure it could be done. Like, no one had ever talked about it. It just, I, I just felt like they were trying to seal my fate. So I found out it did exist. Um, and of course, I read about all the complications. So when I was pregnant with my second baby, I was curious about a VBAC but I was, I was scared. So I remember going to a couple different doctors and just everyone scaring me out of it um, and just making me feel like I was gonna kill my baby if I tried to do this. And so I gave up pretty quick. I thought, okay, I'll just have a repeat C-section. It'll be easier, just schedule it, be done. Um, and it did go smoother than the first since I didn't have um, to deal with the recovery of deliver of um, labor, but nonetheless, just being drugged and um, trying to take care of a newborn and yourself, it just just wasn't what I wanted. And the baby, uh, my second baby, ended up only being seven pounds five ounces. So that alone was just kind of like, okay, well, clearly not all my babies are going to be over nine pounds. So. Um, but I just, just, you know, it was what it was. What can I do at that point? So I got pregnant with our third about um, when my second was 10 months and didn't even look into a VBAC at that point because how in the world could I have a VBAC with my third baby? I've already had two C-sections, so I just, I didn't even bother. Um, we scheduled the C-section. I just remember the anxiety. Um... I just, every surgery, just knowing that like I had to sit there, I hate shots, especially getting that spinal block in your back and just trying to hold still. And I, I always, it just, I had so much anxiety before the surgeries. And um, I remember them trying to take her out and going through the process and stitching me up and it took, each, each C-section took longer and longer because of the scar tissue from the previous operation and I just remember laying there and like I started hyperventilating and I remember them smacking me and saying like Stephanie breathe breathe like I just I just, just starting to, to panic um, and I, just, I remember thinking like I didn't want this to be my last baby I really wanted a fourth and I told my husband 
like I really want a fourth baby and I know that sounds crazy because it's like I'm laying there like having this c-section and already like thinking about another baby it just is nuts but um but I knew in my heart like I really I really wanted this fourth baby and I told him like I, I really want another baby, but I don't want to have to go through this again. And I, I said, I don't know how, but I am not doing this again. No more C-sections. So um, my daughter was born healthy. Um, but again, I had the recovery time and you know the weeks of trying to care for a newborn and care for myself. And I just... I didn't know where that left me. I knew, like I said, I, I wanted that fourth baby, but I just thought I cannot, I can't go through this again. Like this is just, this is too much. It's too much. Um, so my daughter, I thought, well, we'll just, we'll just wait. We'll wait a few years and kind of revisit the subject when maybe she's going to preschool and just kind of see where we're at. Well, in the meantime, she was um, about to turn two and I was at this mom's weekend with just some friends and, and we were talking and naturally the subject of having kids came up and one of the girls was saying that she had a friend who had had multiple c-sections and had a VBAC and I was just like what oh my gosh like it just it just like hit something in me I was like you've got to be kidding like what and like can I have her number so after that weekend, I went home and I started researching again. It just, it renewed that hope that, oh my gosh, this could happen. Like this could be real. So I started researching and I didn't find a lot, but I definitely found moms who had successful VBACs after more than one C-section and um, ended up getting in touch with her friend who actually ended up being an OB nurse at a hospital and um, a huge support to me um, in the, the coming months. So anyways, I'm researching, researching. We're still, I can't talk my husband into having a fourth kid because all this is kind of up in the air and, um, just, I don't know, just kind of where we were at. And, uh, one day I remember getting out of the shower and all of a sudden I just felt like just something came over me and I just felt like I needed to pray over myself and like over, specifically like over my uterus and just over like reproductive areas in my body just a really strong sense that I just needed to pray over myself and um it didn't make sense but I did and just I just asked the Lord if he would do a recreative miracle in my body um because I knew you know I had all the scar tissue from the previous surgeries and I didn't know didn't know what was going on in there and um I just I just prayed I thought, okay, I don't know why, it's not like I'm pregnant or anything, but I'm just going to pray. So I did. Well, probably about a month later, a little time had passed, um, we found out we were having a surprise fourth baby. And I was just like in total shock. I was like, oh my gosh. And, and really, like, I didn't tell my husband until later, but I had been, like, I really had been praying that the fourth would be a surprise because... I couldn't really talk him into it, but I knew it was so on my heart for this fourth baby. So I found out I was pregnant and right away, like things got real. I thought I cannot, I cannot have another C-section. So I started contacting doctors. Um, I started setting up consultations, sending medical forms and um, just denial, 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 like trying to scare me out of it. Like you're, you don't want to do this. You're, you're really like putting yourself in jeopardy. Like we, we can't. We can't support you. You've had three C-sections and no vaginal deliveries, and you, we just, we can't, we can't support you having a VBAC. If you want to have a C-section with us, we'd be happy to take you, but we just can't support this. So, I mean, I was only a couple months pregnant, and at one point, I just, I gave up, and I was like, okay, maybe I'm crazy. Like, maybe this is just, this is just totally far out, and I. I shouldn't even be attempting this and then I and then it was really funny because literally within a week of thinking that um, my new friend that had had the be back after multiple c-sections messaged me on Facebook and she was like hey I was just thinking about you you know hang in there how's it going here's some doctors to talk to and it's like you know when you have someone checking on you and checking in with you it's kind of 
accountability. Like you don't want to say, oh, I just totally gave up. So I messaged her back and I was like, oh, I'm, you know, I can't remember exactly what I said, but it encouraged me to get back on the horse and keep looking. And I started having dreams. Like the Lord just started giving me all these dreams about this pregnancy, just throughout the entire pregnancy. He would just send me, just, they're just encouraging dreams. Um, and the one in particular that stands out the most, I was talking to this woman in my dream, the Miller woman, um, and she was telling me about this doctor. And um, I saw his, his face in my dream, um, and she said, some people say he's a little crazy, but I think you should check with him. He might try this. So I woke up and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I have to find this doctor in real life. Like, who is this doctor I just dreamt about? Like, I know like this has to be a God dream. Um, kept looking and looking um, eight doctors later, like nobody. Everyone just denial, denial. And by now, like, it's, we're going into the holiday season. I'm going towards the end of my second trimester. And a lot of doctors don't want to take you um, past, like, 27 weeks. And I was quickly heading towards that. Um, so I remember I had a consultation. Finally, a doctor said he talked to me. Um, had a consultation. Had to cancel it at the last minute because I came down with like a 104 degree fever and had to be rushed to the emergency room, 21 weeks pregnant. And um, just, I remember just like sobbing. I was so afraid. I was, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know if I had the flu. I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. And I ended up having strep and, um, and thankfully like everything worked out, but I just, had this moment of panic and had to call and cancel my consultation and and I just was like oh my gosh like what the heck like this is just not how I was hoping things would go well I got up the nerve to call back and reschedule it and I told my husband I'm like okay you need to come with me to this consultation I've been going to these by myself and talking to all these doctors by myself and I just can't handle another no I'm just so I'm just feeling like so defeated and so he came with me and I just just kind of had a peace I was like okay Lord like I feel like you've really been starting to set things up I'm just I'm just gonna trust you whatever happens whatever this doctor says just I'm just okay whatever so I went to the consultation and talked to the doctor he scheduled an ultrasound right away and he was like Honestly, I didn't realize you had had, had three C-sections. He's like, two, I'm, I'm okay with, but three, he's like, I probably wouldn't have seen you. Um, but he's like, you know, <laughs> some people might say that I'm a little crazy, but, um, you know, he, he was willing to, to entertain the idea. And I'm laying there as he's doing this ultrasound and he says that line and I'm looking at John and I'm like, oh my gosh. This is totally like in my dream. And uh, he's looking at the baby in the ultrasound. And he's like, you know, everything looks good. Um, I just, he's like, I've never, I've done a lot of VBACs, but I've never had a patient after three C-sections. He's like, give me some research. Give me, find me some other doctors that have done this. Um, you know, just let me, just show me what you have. So I met with him a few times. I researched like crazy, brought him all the paperwork I had, brought him some other names of other doctors. Um, he actually followed up with them, called them, talked to them, kept monitoring me, but still wouldn't take me on as a patient. So now it's like after Christmas and we're still going through this and my due date is April 1st. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I need like something needs to happen here I still don't know if this what what's going on if he's gonna officially take me or I, I just don't know so I just I was just praying about it and I kept researching and and just driving myself crazy honestly with the numbers and the percentages and you could have a uterine rupture and you've got this chance of this and this chance of this and I just was like God, can you just tell me, is this going to work out? Is it not going to work out? If it's not going to work out, I'll just schedule the C-section and just be done with it. And I just finally felt like the Lord was saying to me, Stephanie, I want you to quit researching. You've researched everything you can research. And I want you to just trust me. 
just trust me. I want to give you a gift. And I was just like, and he just really put to me like, this is a decision. You have to make a decision to trust me. So I said, okay. This was January and I was like, okay, Lord, like I'm, I'm gonna quit looking at all the facts and numbers and all these stories, good and bad. And I'm just gonna trust you that this is, you've been orchestrating this. You're putting this into line and um, you have good things planned for me. So I made that decision that day to trust him. And um, we moved forward finally with the OB I had been seeing and he, he monitored me regularly just to make sure everything looked good and the placenta was in the right place and um, that the baby looked good. And I know a lot of people are against multiple ultrasounds during pregnancy, but there's kind of this element of give and take, you know, with my doctor where like I'm asking him to go out on a limb and do something crazy. So I, I felt like, you know, I needed to, to, to trust him a little bit too. So we did have multiple ultrasounds during the pregnancy, um, just to keep an eye on things. And I remember he told me, he's like, well, the ideal situation would be he's like, I, you know, I'll let you go into labor. The ideal situation would be that you go into labor before your due date and his words that you come into the hospital rip roaring in labor at about six centimeters dilated. And I was like, okay. I mean, what am I supposed to say? I can't make that happen. So I'm like, okay, all right, that's your terms. Like I just I accept it. I mean, what else am I going to do? So I found a doula. I did, from my research, I did everything that I possibly could to make sure that this pregnancy was going to go smoothly. Everything in my power. I went to got chiropractic adjustments like all the time. Um, found a doula, uh, took supplements uh, recommended by uh, a midwife. Just, I mean, whatever I could do, I did it. And about five days before my due date, I started having crazy contractions and I was like oh my gosh okay is this it is this really happening and it was the Monday before and my other older kids were on spring break and I had like really wanted a spring break labor because <laughs> I was like I don't know how I'm gonna arrange child care like I had not I don't have a date for where one of this baby is coming like I like I can't plan any of this like it's totally spontaneous and I didn't know what to do and again like I just felt the Lord say to me like Stephanie trust me like I have this all worked out like just just trust me I'm like okay God and I give it to you again so it's Monday first day of spring break start having these contractions and then they're like done by the end of the afternoon I'm sorry the, it started at like 1 30 in the morning and then by the end of the morning like around 10 or 11 they're like done I'm like oh my gosh this is killing me so Tuesday I went to the doctor and he checked to see if I was dilated and he got really excited and he's like do you want to know? And I'm like, what? They tell me. And he's like, you're dilated to four. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like I was so excited. So, which I know can mean nothing, but at this point I'll take whatever I can get. So I go home and I'm like really happy. I'm like, okay, the contractions were doing something. And then it's Wednesday morning, 1.30 again. And I just like was wide awake. Started having these contractions, just woke me up out of a deep sleep. And I'm laying there and I'm like, oh, this is going to happen where they're going to leave again. Just whatever. I just don't care. So I'm trying to go back to sleep and they keep me up. So finally, I just wake, get up, like go in my living room, put some music on, just worship and just sit on the bouncy ball and just walk around my house and like, okay, whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen. I just, I felt at peace. So I stayed up. Contractions just kept coming and coming, and then they died off for a little while. Um, my friend came over for a play date, and it started kicking up again, and I started timing them again, and I'm like, oh, it's starting to get kind of close. Like, maybe this maybe this will be it now. Um, so we're having our play date, and I'm, like, walking around, like, trying to just, you know, walk and having these, like, random contractions and noticing that they're getting closer and closer. Like, I'm at, like, 15 minutes now, 
and then like down to 10 and she's watching me and she's kind of looking at me a little concerned and I'm like I'm gonna go outside and walk around for a little bit and it's getting to the point where I like can barely walk because they're hurting so bad and I'm still like oh maybe they'll stop so I'm walking around the yard and I'm just praying and I'm like starting to get nervous because you know, all this fear starts to creep in and it's like, well, what if you are in labor and, you know, my uterus ruptures and I'm at home and I'm not at the hospital. And I just started like having these fearful thoughts. And I just, I was like, no, I don't accept that. Like this, I believe that, that God has ordained this for me. Like I choose to trust him. I like, I had just been standing on the word, like throughout this entire this entire process like I had been standing on the word I like had my core group of friends that were fully supporting me in this and praying for me like I there were people praying like people told me afterwards like God had you on my heart and I was praying for you at this time and at this time and like there was no doubt this was like God had his hand in this thing so I just I choose chose to believe that and um, came back inside and and my friend's watching me again, and she's just like, um, I think I need to call John, who's my husband. She's like, I think I need to call John. You, I think you need to go to the hospital. So I call my husband. We go to the hospital, and like every bump on the way, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So I get to the hospital. I can't even walk through the parking lot. I'm like holding onto his arm, having to stop like every couple minutes. They wheel me in, finally. I walk through that whole parking lot, and they did not come out with a wheelchair. Anyways, I get in there and I'm trying to talk, trying to check in and the woman's like, well, what pregnancy is this? And I'm like, fourth. And she's like, oh my gosh. And then they finally rush me up. So I get up to the, um, get up there. They check me. I'm at six centimeters dilated. I kid you not. It's noon. Exactly. Finally, my doctor comes. He checks me. He's like, yeah, you're, yeah, you're about six. And, um, everything is like progressing awesome. My doula is there. My husband's there. And it was surreal. Like it was so surreal. I had decided the week before that I wasn't going to do an epidural because I had kind of been on the fence about it. I was really scared of the pain. And I decided like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. So no epidural. Um, so in between contractions, I felt great. I felt normal. I felt completely myself. It was totally weird. And then I'd have another contraction. And, um, I remember like things were progressing awesome. Like by the time I got there to, to within like that next hour, I was already up to eight and I stayed on eight and my water was not breaking. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like my water needs to break. And the doctor wanted to break it. And I was so scared. I was like, no, it's, I want it to break on its own. And he's like, all right, I'll give you an hour. So I said, okay. So he came back in in an hour, hadn't broke. I said, fine. I just want this to be over with, just, just break it. So he broke, I let him break my water, it was not as scary and painful as I thought it would be. It was actually like this massive relief. Um, and then I remember they turned me on my side and um, just kind of repositioned me and I went to 10. Pushed for the longest hour of my life, the most intense hour of my life. And finally at about 4.03, uh, my Owen, little Owen, was born, actually big Owen, he ended up being born 8 pounds, 10 ounces, so right in between all my other kids, and completely healthy baby, and I remember just, oh my gosh, it was amazing, like, I remember just holding him on my chest for the first time, like all the other babies, I did not, I didn't, I wasn't the first one to hold him, my husband was, and I just held him, and held him, and he was so happy, like, he was just, he was just happy guy, and, um, it just was, oh my gosh, just one of the most amazing experiences of my life, and I remember, like, sitting there, in my right mind, it wasn't doped up on all this pain medicine, I was completely coherent, like I wasn't starving to death because I, I ate at home and it just, oh my gosh, I just remember holding him and just thinking like, wow, like that I can't believe I just had a baby, like I just birthed this child and it was just the best thing ever. I got to change his first diaper. Um, 
I got to take care of him in the hospital. I got to walk around. I remember like sitting sitting in my bed, like totally comfortable with you know, within a couple hours of having him. I was discharged from the hospital exactly 48 hours later to go home. I just the whole thing was such a redemp redemptive event. Like there's no doubt in my mind, like God's hand was completely in in that V back. And I just want to encourage other moms. I know like I know the hurt and I know the feeling of just just wanting to have that natural labor and not having to go through the anxiety and pain and just everything that can come along with a C section. I it can it can happen. Like you can have your V back. You can have your V back. And I just want to encourage the moms out there that it is possible and you can have a healthy baby. Um I would love to talk to you if you have any, send me an email. I would love to help in any way I can or share any other details. So I hope this encouraged somebody today. Have a great day.